This is the Chaos Replay. This is the newest Chaos device from Korg. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I've been using it in my live sets. This video is not meant to serve as a review or a tutorial. This is not a sponsored video. I happen to have my hands on the Chaos Replay because I've been working with Korg, beta testing the unit, and I've been taking it out and playing it at shows. I've played three shows with this unit so far. What I want to share with you in this particular video is how I've been using this new device, which currently isn't out yet, but is available for pre-order at some shops, and some alternatives to using something like this. There's a bunch of devices that can kind of fit the role that I'm using the Chaos Replay for. It does some very specific things for me that I can't do with my OctaTrack but I could do with some other external pieces of gear. You may know me from working on the OctaTrack, building performance templates with the OctaTrack. This is my workflow. These are the machines that I love. I love working on Electron, but I love all boxes. And if something can serve a role for me, especially a utilitarian role, kind of like a maths would in your Eurorack system, then I'm gonna love that too. Like the OctaTrack. We love the OctaTrack. It can kind of fit into any role. The Chaos Replay is another one of these devices. It's got a really nice build quality. It does have some quirks about it, of course. All devices do. The OctaTrack has a ton of quirks. You know, so does the Digitact. They're all over the place. We, there's no perfect one-size-fits-all kind of device. But it does offer many things that I find incredibly useful for live shows. And that's what it's designed for. It's designed to be this external unit that maybe sits outside of your DJ mixer, or it sits in between two decks or it is an external box for you to just send audio to, or it's meant to be your end of chain processor for live effects, which is what I'm using it for. It does quantize live looping with time stretch, which is really valuable, and it does it really well. Right now I have it MIDI synced to my OctaTrax clock. This is the master clock in the setup today. I just wanna give you a demonstration of what it's done to help me out. One of the issues I run into when I'm playing a live show is that when you change projects on the OctaTrack, your audio goes to absolute silence. Now we're making electronic music. We don't need to go to silence. We don't, no one needs to take a break. No one needs to grab a glass of water. You get what I'm saying? Like these things, they don't need to take breaks. So why would I have a break in my music? Having breaks in your performance is so palpable. Like you can feel the silence big time. When you go from this huge electronic show down to complete silence, it's not something that I like to do. I avoid it as much as I can. Either all of your music is living in one project and you never have to leave the project or you have to switch projects. And if you have multiple boxes, you got to switch projects on multiple boxes, which means you have downtime. Legit downtime. And when you change projects on the OctaTrack, your music goes to dead silence, which is part of the reason why I build all my music in a singular project. However, I've got a lot of music at this point, and I like to, you know, curate my shows based on some songs that might be in this project or in this project. So I needed something to provide me with some audio in between jumping around there. That's where the Chaos Replay comes in. Not just because it has different effects than what I have in my current setup, I kind of use them sparingly, but I do use them as flourishes on top of the existing effects that I've built in my performance templates. I do like to use my performance template effects because I built them for my music. They're automated and they're a different beast in their own right. But it's really nice to have these Korg effects as well because they sound really great. They're definitely updated compared to some of the effects you might have in your OctaTrack. And there are other boxes like this out there, RMX 1000, the Roland 404, Boss Loopers. They can do similar functions that this box can do, but this is a very robust box and I feel like it just fits with my Electron grouping very well. So I like that about the unit. Now let me get down to the nitty gritty here. So say I'm trying to switch projects. I'm not actually gonna switch projects because we don't need to actually go through that process, but let me show you what you can do in this situation. So if I have my music playing, here's some tunes. It's running into the Chaos Replay right now. And if I want, I could sample an eight bar loop of this just by hitting sample. And here we go, Let's sample an eight bar loop. It's gonna have a perfectly quantized sample. And currently I have this fader set to the sample side, and this fader set to the live audio, and these are grouped, right? We got our sample going, I can now switch to that recording. Hey, check it out, I'm in an eight bar loop right now. If I want to, I can have stretch on or off, this is your time stretch. Now if I change the tempo on the OctaTrack to meet a different tempo of a new song, Check that out. 
But regardless, let's bring it back to the original tempo. I was able to silently switch to a recording. Now I can change projects, stop the Octatrack, dig attack, syntax. None of this stuff is functioning right now. I can load up a brand new project. I can do whatever I want. That is why I like having an external looper. Another thing I was doing that I really love, and I actually got this idea from Dean Crystal. He's a great performer, and uh, he was actually using his phone or a 404 to do this, but I was doing it this, at the last show I played. I'll launch a song in here. I don't want to use the stretch sync or anything, but I'm just going to fade out of this music and fade into the sample. You can also set these all to be exclusive, so only one sample plays at a time. Probably smart move to do what I'm doing right now. So let's get out of live. Yes. So I've crossfaded over to a prepared song. This is the song, it's last through about three, four minutes. I could do whatever I want. Huge changes, I could grab a new piece of gear and set up, I could go to the bathroom if I wanted, I could grab a, a hot dog or something. Come back and get back into my set. Let's go to a new song here. Start it off on one of my performance scenes so it feels like an intro. Fade back out of this. Here we go. This is supposed to be at 140 BPM, but whatever. Sounds good at a 120. Did you get the idea here? It's a safety net, but not just that. Let's check out this idea with effects. So right now I have my brand new performance template loaded in my Octatrack, Performance Mixer 3.0. Probably my favorite, I say that every time, but they really are my favorite every time I come out with a new iteration. This one has noise sweeps in it and comb filters on noise sweeps. It's got these great buildups and the effects are a little bit tighter in some of the spots. I built like 20 brand new effects for my template. But now I have these 12 different, pretty awesome sounding effects loaded into my replay that I can grab that will actually flourish my existing performance effects. And it's pretty fun, check this out. So let's actually bring the tempo up to 140 for both these patterns. There's only two patterns for this right now. Holy cow, get over there. Okay. All right, let's do like one of my buildups with a noise sweep. Currently, there's two versions of this template, a four bar and an eight bar version, but I have all these great effects in here. I really like this talk filter, sounds good. Let's go to a new pattern. This buildup effect is this. The talk filter is just a flourish here. They're just different effects than what I'm having my Octrek that are available to me. And with the live looping and the time stretch, just it's a win-win for me. This low pass looper is so much fun. These loopers, they're really fun to play with. They're a lot like the Octrek's loopers but they're a little bit more flexible with the timing. But using these effects together, it's just like, it's too fun. Or nice build up here. Go to another one. We can add a pump reverb to, to this effect. You do have to dial these effects in, their depths, because sometimes the effects can be a little loud, but there's a sweet spot and you can definitely find it.
One of the things that they added that needed to be here for this to function the way that I needed this to function was to be able to assign pads to groups without putting samples on them. So now I can actually record to a group and then crossfade to it. You can also set it up in a way that makes it so when you record, the sample doesn't automatically start playing and looping. You can have it just record the sample and not do anything. Now it has those functions that I wanted. Another feature they added to the replay to make it more usable for finger drummers and for finger drumming, which is something I'm passionate about. I really love finger drumming. I always try and do it in every little Korg video that I make. They added a gate threshold for the velocity of the pads. That wasn't there before. You can't accidentally trigger silent pads. So you might accidentally hit at zero velocity. So now they added that gate threshold. So now finger drumming is very possible on here. There is no sequencer, but for me, I don't want a sequencer. I'm not gonna sequence things on this. I want it to do exactly what I just showed you. This is the function of this box for someone like me who's using it as a utility. I get really excited about pieces of gear that solve problems for me. This doesn't create a problem for me, it's solving a problem for me. Octatrack solves problems for me. Digattack solves problems. You know, I love boxes that'll solve an issue for me, and especially in a live setting. I like my performances to feel like I'm playing the boxes myself, not like I'm hitting play and they're kind of like just doing their thing and every once in a while I do a high pass filter or something like that. That's not me, you know? I, I really want to turn knobs all the time and I want to be heavily involved and I think that I have enough bandwidth left to add something like this because I don't need to use it all the time. I just use it as for a flourish here or there or when it can do an effect better than the Octatrack can or when I need to live loop outside of the Octatrack or the Electron ecosystem. That's the power. So I wouldn't always live loop on here. I like live looping on my Octatrack because I can repitch the sample on the Octatrack, play with the Octatrack stuff. I don't always have that option. Sometimes I need to live loop on an external box so that I can move into new projects. And the looper on, it's really easy to use. I just hit the sample button and hit a pad and then bam, it just works. And then I fade over. I do have these faders set up in a way in the global settings, the group fader curve is set to a reverse linear curve. For whatever reason, the reverse linear curve works better for crossfading. It's just as a much smoother transition. You can't hear that I've switched between the live audio and the recorded audio. I just wanted to talk about this. I know that I don't talk about gear outside of Electron very often, and I don't really use gear outside of Electron boxes very often, say for like a TBO3 or like this awesome little keyboard, the OMX27. You know, I'm not usually using stuff outside of this ecosystem because I'm kind of a firm believer of of sticking to an ecosystem so that you can get really good at it. But this thing doesn't have a learning curve that is steep at all. It's really simple. There's not too much to learn. Not a review. As I said, this is my experience with it. I'm really using it for exactly what I showed you, just for transitions, effects flourishes, and um, grabbing some sampled loops or playing back tracks on it while I switch over to a new set in my live shows but it's doing me a lot of favors. As far as the performance template goes on the Octatrack, I got some great effects in my new performance template, Octatrack Performance Mixer 3.0. Please check it out, it's fantastic. You can find it on my Patreon or you can just buy it off coffee.com slash easybot. It's an absolute blast. The noise risers with the comb filters, it's good stuff. It's like any genre that you want, I've got it ready to go. Good times ahead, right? Hey, my name's Matthew, AKA EasyBot. I'll see you next time.